Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, I'm going to talk about events in C Sharp and why I think that nowadays they're a bit irrelevant. I'm also going to talk to you about my preferred way that gives the same experience, but in my opinion, better. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the same notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. So let me show you what events are in the first place, because many of you might not actually know what they are. So let's say you want to do something when something happens in your application. Now, you don't necessarily tell something else to do something. You just say that something happened and other components in your application might want to subscribe to those events and listen to them when they happen to act on it. For example, when a letter is pressed in your keyboard, you might want to do something, or when a number is pressed, you might want to do something else, or more business-related things. For example, when a user is created, some metric service might be interested in that event because they need to increase how many users were created today and so on. So it's more of this pub sub kind of approach. Now, this mechanism actually exists in C Sharp as a native feature with events. And let's go ahead and show you how that works. So I'm going to create a button masterclass uh, and I'm going to create a public event and that will be an event handler. For now, let's just leave it uh, without any generic type parameter and let's call it button pressed. So our event is button pressed. And now I can invoke that event on different things. For example, I can have a public void on button pressed here. Um, and I will define my button as the key code of the keyboard. So I'm going to use a character here and I'm going to say key code. Uh, and all I need to do is do a button pressed and then question mark. And actually this should be nullable too, because if it's not actually defined uh, anywhere in my application, I don't want this to throw a null reference exception. So we're going to go ahead and say invoke and this requires a sender. So the sender will be um, this and also arguments. Now, in this case, I'm going to leave the arguments empty, but the arguments eventually will need to be the key code we pass down. But before I show you how you can do that, I want to show you the absolute basics. So now we have the event in the form of the event handler and something to raise the event. So I can go back to my program class and I can say var button master equals new um, button master here. And now what I need to do is write code that subscribes to that event. So my event, you can see it even has a different symbol here. This describes an event. And what I can do is say button pressed and then use the subscribe operator here. And I can use a Lambda in line so I can do this. And then when something happens, when that event is invoked, I can say console dot right line uh, button was pressed. I'm not going to capture what button. I'm just going to say any button or now. So I subscribed. That's the Lambda. I can extract this to a void method if I want to, but I'm going to leave it in line for the demo for now. And then all I need to do is get the key. So key code is console dot read key intercept is true and then get the key character. And then I'm going to say button master dot on button pressed and I'm going to pass down the key code and to prevent having to make a loop or something. I'm going to use a label and a go to. You should not really use labels and go to's on anything but simple things like demos to showcase small things. And now this was everything we needed to handle the inventing. So I can now go ahead and run this application. And if I go into the console, I can press buttons and buttons appear. Now, if I wanted to pass down an argument, um, currently I'm using just the bog standard event args class. However, I can create my own public class button pressed event args and create my own argument. So what I want here is a character and that will be the key code. And I'm going to remove the setter and I'm going to initialize that from the constructor. So that's everything I need. And now I can specify in the handler that the arguments for this handler are the button pressed event arguments. And now we're going to instantiate that object here and pass it down with the key code, meaning that in the other code over here, this is the button pressed event args. So button and we're going to pass down the event args dot key code was pressed. So I can now run this again. And when I press buttons, I also capture what button was pressed. Great. Now, uh, one of the selling points about events, like I said, it's one publisher, multiple consumers or subscribers. So many of those things could subscribe here uh, and act on it. So button that was pressed from different handler. Uh, and if I am to run this now again and I press a button, you see the print text twice because it's happening once from here and once from here. You can have 
many subscribers to that event. However, this is very clunky to work with, especially with modern C Sharp, with dependency injection, and a lot of other things that go into making an application. And I should say at this point that this mostly refers to backend code. I'm not going to argue that WinForms needs an event handler to handle the button clicks in the application. That's how it works. You cannot fundamentally change the framework. But if you're building .NET applications for the backend mostly, I believe that this is completely obsolete. So let's take a step back and let's close this and go to this API that I have here. So this API, just a small minimal API, it registers a transient service, which I'm going to show you what we're going to do in a second. And then I'm registering a hosted service over here. It's a background service, actually, uh, that does something every one second. And if I am to simply like do console write line pong and I run this, as you can see in the console, it just prints pong every second. That's it. Now, what I'm going to use this for is actually emitting an event that many subscribers can listen to and act. The event will be something simple. For example, I'm going to have one handler that takes on every second and then another handler that takes every five seconds. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a, a ticker service uh, and I'm going to register that in program.cs as a singleton. So uh, services add singleton goes here and then ticker service and we're going to have pretty much the same thing i'm going to create an event so public event handler and we're actually going to have arguments so ticker event args go here so that will be ticked and i'm going to go ahead and create the class for the argument so public class ticker event args goes here and i'm going to have the time only so that's what's going to be the argument here so i'm just going to call this time remove the setter and turn this into a constructor property. So here we go. And then we need something to trigger the tick. So I'm going to say on tick. So public avoid on tick goes here. And actually this will also accept the time. So time only goes here. And then we're just going to call that and invoke it. So ticked question mark dot invoke and we're going to invoke it to the sender which is this and then new ticker event arguments time only and then time in here and that's it and now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to subscribe those events in the constructor i could split them in other locations but for convenience sake let's just subscribe them here so the first one will be the one that happens every second so i'm going to create a method actually and say public void on every second and this will have an object an nullable object sender which is what we want and then a ticker event arguments so args go here and then we're simply going to subscribe that here so on every second and all i'm going to do is just print the long form of the time uh, and also i'm going to create another one the every five seconds so every five seconds uh, and this will need to calculate based on the time when to tick so i have to say dot second modulo five equals zero then tick meaning that inevitably every five seconds, this will write twice and then go ahead and subscribe that event. Uh, you can actually also, in case you didn't know, uh, unsubscribe an event. So you can say something like this um, on every second. And if you run this, then that ticked event will be unsubscribed, that specific one based on the method it's pointing at. And of course, you can accidentally subscribe this twice. It's a bit confusing, but what we want is the on every five seconds. And then the last thing is I'm going to go to the ticker background service. I'm going to inject the private read-only ticker service here. And then that's coming from the constructor. And I'm not going to bring Pong. I'm just going to say on tick. And I'm going to pass down the current time. So date time dot now. And I need this to be time only. So time only from date time is date time now. Here we go. And then I'm going to just run this. So let's run it and let's see what's happening. And you can see every second it's ticking and every five seconds in this case, 20 is every five seconds. Uh, it's returning the thing twice, so 25 twice, and so on and so forth. That's the eventing mechanism. Now, here's a problem. Let's say in one of those events, I wanted to print um, a GUID every second. And that GUID would be coming from this transient service. So this transient service has a GUID in it, but because it's transient, every time it's resolved, it's a new instance, meaning you're going to get a new GUID on every instance of this class. Now, if I go ahead and I inject it in here and I say private read only, let's just stop this from running, private read only uh, transient service. And just to prove you that this is transient, here you go, it is transient. I can go back here and inject that transient service 
and it goes in the constructor. Uh, and I can just replace the every second one with transient service dot good. And now if I run this, what do you expect to happen? Well, some of you might say, I expect a new good on any invocation because it's transient, it's resolved, it should print a different thing. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it's returning. So as you can see, I'm getting the same good every single time and then every five seconds, I'm getting the time. Uh, and that's because, well, first, it is a transient within a singleton, so it wouldn't be resolved every time. But even if I change that to a transient, so add a transient over here, uh, because the background service will only be instantiated once, you can't really control the scope in a way that makes sense for your application. So if I run this again, as you can see, I'm still getting the same value here. It's not changing. Um, and it wouldn't change anyway because this Lambda has actually captured that single instance of the transient service. So unless you do something like this, where the service itself is something you pass down over here, so public transient service, and you pass it down from the constructor, you're going to have dependency nightmares here. It can really, really get confusing. And that's just one of the problems you're going to have with that approach. So what I want to do is show you what has replaced events for me in a way more manageable way, in a way more modern way for modern C Sharp and .NET. Uh, and for that, we're going to use mediator, but not the request response mediator that you know, but the notification based mediator. Mediator has behavior that's very similar to events. You can emit an event or a notification and many subscribed handlers can consume the same event in same fashion, but have proper dependency ejection, proper structure and way, way more manageable. So what I'm going to do in this project over here, which has the same basis, is I'm going to go ahead and add mediator and I'm going to use the dependency injection package because I'm going to use it to wire up my project. So that's installed. And all I need to do is say builder.services.add mediator type of program for the program.cs. That is an assembly marker over here. So now that I've done that to give you the same experience as before, and you can see that this is the same code, all I need to do is first inject private read-only i mediator here. So I'm going to do that and then inject it from the constructor. And all mediator needs to do at this point is publish, not send, but publish asynchronously, which is another huge benefit, by the way, because previously, yeah, you can have async events, but that's a whole different nightmare you have to deal with. And here we're going to publish our notification. So all I need to say is create a new class called timed notification. Here you go. And I'm going to have that implement the I notification interface. And all I need here is time only. Same thing as before. This represents our event args, if you think about it. So I'm going to remove that and initialize that from the constructor. Here we go. And all I need to do is say new timed notification and pass down the time only. So time now. Uh, and I'm also going to pass down the cancellation token because I can. So that's everything I need. Now, all I need to do to handle the events is make handlers, because if I run this without any handlers, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. As you can see, nothing happens. The service is running and the thing it's ticking every second. If I actually uh, debug this instead of run it over here and stick a breakpoint, you'll see that this is happening every second. I'm getting that ticked and ticked and ticked but there's no one to listen to those notifications, so nobody will act on them. So to do the exact same thing, I'm going to say every second handler, and this will be an I notification handler, which accepts a specific notification. So in our case, this is the timed notification, and I'm going to implement the missing members, and I have the notification object and the cancellation token, and all I'm going to say is console.writeline notification.time.com too long time string and then return task dot completed task because we don't need async in this case. And I'm going to have the every five seconds. So every five seconds handler over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I notification handler and we have a timed notification come in, implement that and do the same thing as before. So if notification dot time dot second modulo five equals zero, then console dot right line notification dot time dot too long time string and return the task dot complete the task. That's it. And now if I go ahead and I run this application, as you can see, it is acting in the exact same way. It's printing the time every second and every five seconds. That's why we have the one happening twice here. And it gives you the exact same experience. But and there's a big but 
If I go back now and instead of printing the time in the every second one, I want to inject the same private read-only transient service, which again should be instantiated every time, and I replace it here with the ID printing and I run it again, watch what happens. It's printing a different ID every time because it is a truly transient service that's being instantiated and it works properly with DI without having to worry about captured lambdas and events and unsubscriptions and all that nightmare. It's just a significantly more manageable approach. And by the way, Mediator is just one of the implementations. It's a very solid one. That's why I'm using it. But if you want to build your own, you can. However, I would just not use the built-in eventing mechanism. I would use something like this. It's just way, way more modern and way, way more manageable in my experience. And it gives you basically the same experience in a better package. So I highly recommend you check it out. As always, Mediator, great package. Give it a star if you haven't already. I'm sure you have, but in case you haven't. And I really want to know what you think about this approach. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more than like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.